I'm Richie. Um, people that know me, like Helene uh, up there, she belongs to Community Yoga Austin. And uh, I've been lucky to have those people come find me. Um, to explain it, some people call me Yogi Richie now. Five years ago, I was arrested on criminal charges for the last time in my life. I had been in prison three times in my life. Shortly after I was arrested, I realized it was the last time I would ever use alcohol or drugs in my life. It was also the last time I had ever hurt anybody with my hands or myself physically ever again. Somewhere in October, there was these two people that were fighting over the television, you know, like Young and the Restless and Ella DeGeneres. That was like really important to them at the time. And uh, I didn't want to get maced or go to lockdown for hours on end. So they called for a class. I didn't even know what they called for. I just went for the door and I left. You know, this is um, divine intervention. And uh, I call these accident purpose. Because when this had happened, the guard was new. And he didn't realize that we were supposed to sign up for these classes. They give you a lay-in and you go because they call your name. So I go into this class. And there's this guy with dreads, you know, <laughs> and um, he says, hey, welcome to yoga. I was like, oh, man, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> maybe, maybe the fight was better, you know, I don't know. <laughs> so he, he kind of just greets me, and the um, first thing I told him was, I, I thought yoga was for girls, and this was only men in this room. Uh, they don't let you do yoga with women in in a prison facility other than the, the instructors. And so <laughs> he just chuckled and he said, he'll grab a mat and have a seat. Um, I didn't know the relationship that was going to happen at that point. You know, um, up until that moment, I had only loved, you know, like my father, my grandfather, those kind of men in my life. Um, that man became like a, a father, uncle, brother, all in one. And, what became so amazing about this, this whole thing is that I went to go get away from a fight and it changed my whole life. You know, when he showed me how not to run from my feelings, I learned this posture called crow and I had been hurting myself for years. When I finally found that posture, it was almost like I got a book on a bookshelf and slid it right in. And it was weird, but I told him, I was like, I instantly knew I wasn't going to hurt myself anymore. Building from that point, I realized things were happening. I didn't practice in front of people. I didn't go on the rec yard. I did it whenever we were locked down for this hour period during the day. I didn't have self-esteem. One day, it's funny because I was watching the video at the beginning, some guy caught chain, and that means you're getting transferred to a different unit. He slides a book under my door, and I didn't realize it, but when he was going to court, he would watch me and see me doing practice in my room. And he slid this book, and it was called Journey into Power, which is Baron Baptiste. And that was my first time I'd ever seen any kind of photos or even read any kind of explanation of what the hell I was doing. <laughs> but what really caught my eye is that he talked about growing up with this father that was kind of like a guru. He was learning with all these amazing teachers around the world. And he took advantage of it. He didn't, he didn't appreciate it. And he felt like... It was an injustice. And like halfway through his life in this book, he talks about how it changed his life. He connected it with the Native, Amer Native American attributes. And I'm, you know, part Native American, right? And so I was like, wow, there's something really behind this. There's something really powerful. It's not just stretching. There's something going on. And one thing I loved about Jeff is that he didn't force me to do anything. Whatever I was doing, he would just groom it. And so I only had about eight or nine classes with this gentleman. And then I got chained. I went to another unit. And when I made it there, <laughs> it was a big shock. 
they, they stuck me in solitary confinement. And <laughs> that's when the real growth happened. I don't think anybody would want to be in a room by themselves. <laughs> but at that point, it was like I was in my own personal ashram, and it was a gift. I knew maybe nine to 12 postures. When I left that cell, I knew 179. Where did they come from? How did I find them? It's in your DNA. There's this word called foha they talk about. There's this general knowledge. You know, when they discovered electricity, somewhere across the world when internet didn't exist, somebody else three months later found it. So there's this energy that you can find, you can tap into, if you just sit there and tune the frequency on that radio knob. It's there. There's postures that I see all the time that I had found that were already there, that people practice. Where does it come from? It comes from that hunger. They wouldn't let me get publications about yoga because it wasn't about rehabilitation. That's what they told me. My mother's here. She had to see them deny me any kind of literature, and they call it publications, because it wasn't recovery-based. <laughs> Our criminal justice system really needs to be aware and awakened to what this stuff can do for people. One thing I noticed is that not only inside of myself, but other things were happening at, around the people watching me. So time came when it was time for me to get out of solitary confinement. I had done whatever I had to do. I was a good citizen or whatever in the jail. And when they let me out, I didn't want to go. I wanted to stay. And I asked them, how do I stay here? How can I stay right here? And they said, well, you either have to get in a fight or cause a disturbance, and that gives you more time into this system. I said, well, I can't do that. Three days later, I remember talking to my mom. She was about to come see me in a visit. And I just couldn't take it anymore. So. Um, I did the only thing I could do that was nonviolent, and I took off all my clothes. <laughs> and uh, I remember reading it as I went, you know, you have to go in front of this, like, court panel, and it says, you know, Offender Flores began to disrobe in the middle of the day room. I mean, it, I, I just thought it was funny, but <laughs> apparently they didn't. So now I'm into... <laughs> Well, they sent me back, and so whatever I was trying to do, it, it happened, and it worked. So when we would go to rec, they would escort me by myself. My mother painfully had to watch me being escorted with my hands, you know, to my waist and my feet, and doubling up my socks so it doesn't scar my feet. But the guard that used to cut my break off at 45 minutes now would tell me, hey, I'm going to let you go to a minute I mean, an hour and 15 minutes so you can complete your whole practice because I've been watching you. And then they would ask me about their back pain or sleeping. And, man, I must have been sleeping really good in that cell with a smile on my face because why would they ask me about that? You know, and this is a prisoner before. They just treated, you know, like a dog, and I just sat in this cell by myself. You know, what we're doing here changes lives. And I'm here to show you that it works, not only just with myself, but with what Ted's doing, what Pure Action is doing. You know, yoga is something that builds bridges to other people. I teach in this class called the Yoga Ride, and we connect people, and we don't charge anything, but we connect doctors with people that wash dishes or lawyers. All kinds of people come to this class that normally would not talk to each other, not because they don't respect each other or don't love each other. They just would not be in the same circle. But showing people that we can make a change just by giving love. You know, I learned about choice. And to me, I remember not being able to choose when I took a shower or having a warm meal. I didn't have ice for almost two years. Imagine that, even though Ayurveda says don't drink ice with your water. But I have the choice. <laughs> and then I choose to feel raindrops and, and, and enjoy it when they touch my skin because I didn't have anybody touch me for years. 
I choose to enjoy the sun. I appreciate every minute of my life, every day. And I hope that if you never speak to another prisoner again or listen to him, please understand what choice means. And today I chose to spend my evening with you.